Ty Gibbs made an impressive debut in the Xfinity Series last season, winning four times in 18 races. Expectations were understandably high coming into 2022, his first full-time season, and he's delivered. The 20-year-old got off to a fast start, winning at Las Vegas in the third race of the season and securing three victories in the season's first seven races. Gibbs then went winless in nine races before he won again at Road America. In the back half of the season, Gibbs hasn't recorded the win on a consistent basis, but he has run well. Since the midway point, he's won just two times, including on Saturday at Martinsville, but he's had 12 top 10 finishes in 16 races. Everyone knows that he has one of the best cars every race. Everyone also knows he is talented. The results don't lie, but everyone also recognizes that Gibbs has some serious concerns as a race car driver. He's immature, has trouble controlling his temper, and doesn't accept responsibility. He's displayed it time and time again this year, in both the Xfinity Series and Cup Series. The list of incidents from this year alone is long and started at Gibbs' first win of the year at Las Vegas, where he wrecked Ryan Sieg on lap two. A few months later, Sam Mayer and Gibbs rekindled their rivalry from the Arca days at Martinsville, getting heated on the track before the JGR driver rammed into the rear of the number one junior motorsports car a couple of times, then confronted the driver on pit road, where he proceeded to throw the first punch and hit Mayer in the face, all while still wearing his own helmet. There has also been conflict with two of Mayer's JRM teammates, Noah Gregson at Portland and at Kansas last month with Justin Allgaier. After that incident, Gibbs apologized during a rain delay interview. Um, and then we went back racing, and uh, off before I made contact with Justin, I felt like I hit the wall harder than I did, and I didn't, and I got mad and whipped it down and hit him in the door. And the stupid part is, is it hurt my car more than it hurt his. And I feel like his car is okay, but they're going to have to put a door on it when they get back to the shop. And that's just inexcusable for me. And I'm very disappointed in my actions, and I apologize to them. I thought it was worse, honestly, than it was. And a lot watched on TV, it wasn't. So I apologize to Jason, Justin, and Dale, and the whole group, the whole seven group. And I, it's just can't be doing that stuff and it's it was my fault I just felt like I hit the wall got hit in the wall harder than I did and I came back down and hit him and it just can't I can't be doing that last month at Texas Gibbs made a couple of hot tempered moves in the cup series race serving as a substitute for Kurt Busch in the 2311 racing car where he deliberately drove into the door of Ty Dillon on pit road and the petty GMS car narrowly missed hitting several Roush Fenway Keselowski pit crew members and two NASCAR officials standing nearby he also ran into the rear of Eric Jones under caution twice in that same race. That brings us to this weekend's Xfinity playoff cutoff race at Martinsville, where Gibbs is already remembered for his bad choices in the spring race. On Saturday, the JGR driver took his bad decision game to the next level. At the end of the race and in position to win, Gibbs battled against teammate Brandon Jones. The broadcast had talked about how Jones had already announced he was going to junior motorsports in 2023, so Gibbs might not be too concerned about his soon-to-be former teammate. All they had to do was go back to the Richmond race that Gibbs won in the spring and see how he races against teammates when he ran John Hunter Nemechek up the track for the win on the final turn. On the final overtime restart at the paperclip, Gibbs started from the inside of row one with Gregson on his outside and Jones right behind. Jones got a good launch and got to the inside of the number 54 car and made it three wide coming out of turn two. Jones got a push from Sheldon Creed from behind, surged out in front, and took the white flag with Gibbs right behind him. Seconds later, Gibbs drove hard into the rear of the number 19 and sent the JGR car up the track into the wall, which allowed him to pass and go on to the win. The NBC broadcast crew immediately criticized Gibbs for the move because A, it was dirty, and B, it knocked his teammate out of a guaranteed transfer spot into the championship with a win. A few minutes later, the fans joined in and rain booze down on the young driver as soon as he exited his car and throughout his post-race interview. His move on the track was bad enough, but he only added to the reason fans dislike him in a post-race interview with Sirius XM NASCAR Radio's Claire B. Lang when he made a shocking comparison. To boo Kyle sure. Busch, you got up on top of the car, you heard the boos, and you were like, bring it on. Not everybody can wear the black cowboy hat, right? For I mean, sure. how do you feel about all this? And, uh, you know, what's inside of you on it, you know? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I always go back to you know, the, same, the same verse that, you know, Jesus was hated first and among all the people. So, you know, that's a part of it. 
While comparing himself to Jesus is certainly a strange take, what happened in the post-race press conference with the full assortment of reporters was equally bizarre. Naturally, members of the media wanted to talk about what had happened on that final lap and peppered the driver with questions related to the incident. In total, there were 11 questions asked of Gibbs in the presser, including things like would he talk to Jones and apologize. Incredibly, Gibbs robotically responded to 10 of those questions with the exact same answer over and over and over. Each time, he mentioned how he was first moved, how he moved Jones back, and how he didn't mean to wreck him. For sure, I feel like, you know, after we got shoved out of the way for the first time, I feel like, you know, I feel like we're, that was on, and we're racing for wins, you know, um, after that. And, I mean, going into the turn one, I, I definitely didn't want to clean him out, um, but I definitely wanted to move him. So, I mean, just, we're racing for wins, and I got moved. I didn't want to I mean, truth be honest, didn't want to wreck him, but th I definitely want to move him way out of the groove so I can go take the win and get, I mean, get a call. I don't know. At the end of the day, we're coming down to racing. and It was hard racing. I got moved out of the way, and I went back and moved him and didn't want to move him as hard as I did and wreck him, but I wanted to move him for sure. Um, it was uncomfortable to watch because after just a few questions, it was obvious to the reporters that any question would be answered with the same canned response. Gibbs was clearly instructed to answer the same throughout. It was definitely a bad look, and it capped off a day of bad looks for Gibbs. Quite honestly, it's been a season of bad looks. Now Gibbs heads into Phoenix next weekend with a chance at the Xfinity Championship. He'll be battling for it against three junior motorsports cars, two of which he's had run-ins with this year. But it's not those drivers he should be watching in the mirror, but the number 19 car. And if Brandon Jones does decide to retaliate, no one will blame him except Gibbs and his grandfather.